Good morning. We come here today bringing our whole selves, holding together our convictions and differences. We carry with us our hopes, dreams, doubts, and fears. We offer prayers of thanksgiving and prayers in time of need. If you are watching from your bedroom, living room, kitchen, from another city, state, or country, or nearby here in Shoreline, if you watch by cell phone, computer, or tablet, you are welcome here. If you identify as Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, and or nonpartisan, if you have voted in every election or none at all, you are welcome here. If you woke up excited, refreshed, and ready for the day, you are welcome here. If you are tired, exhausted, distracted, or if you don't want to be here, you are welcome here. If you look around and feel alone, an outsider, a stranger, you are welcome here. If you go to church every Sunday, or if this is your first time in a worship-like space, you are welcome here. If you are a layperson, community organizer, activist, pastor, deacon, or prophet, and if you have no idea what any of those things are, you are welcome here. If you grew up in a household where English was not spoken, or if English is your second, third, fourth, or only language, you are welcome here. If you have a physical or mental condition that limits your learning, movements, senses, or activities, you are welcome here. If you have documentation, a visa, green card, papers, passport, or birth certificate, or if you have no papers or documents at all, you are welcome here. If you have been diagnosed with a mental illness or have been affected by mental illness, you are welcome here. If you are filled with grief, you are welcome here. If you are struggling with addiction, you are welcome here. If you are transgender, lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, or straight, or questioning, you are welcome here. If you are four weeks old, or 44, or 84, or 104, you are welcome here. We bring our whole self here today. There is no need to check anything at the door. All that forms, informs, sustains, and dwells in you is welcome here. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of, of your great love, you raise us up from sin and death and make us alive together with Christ. Write your word upon our hearts and restore in us the image of your love that by your spirit, our way of life may become the way of Christ to whom we pray. Amen. Amen.
to us. Trusting God's word and promises, we pray in the power of the Spirit and in the name of Christ Jesus for the sake of all creation, in singing and silence, in stillness and sighing, when lifting our hands or lighting a candle, we pray. Let us sing our hymn of the day. Bless now, O oh God, the journey. Your W number three twenty six. Trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After escaping from slavery, the Israelites come to Mount Sinai, where God teaches them how to live in community. The Ten Commandments proclaim that God alone is worthy of worship. Flowing from God, the life of the community flourishes when based on honesty, trust, fidelity, and respect for life, family, and property. A reading from Exodus, the 20th chapter. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. is pure foolishness and nonsense to the world because it claims that God is mostly revealed in weakness, humiliation, and death. But through such divine foolishness and weakness, God is working to save us. The center of Paul's preaching is Christ crucified. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will support. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, 
Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, Word of Life. Let us stand fast while come to us, O Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Diane Johnson. I'm currently serving as a deacon in the Northwest Washington Synod as the director for Evangelical Mission. In my work, it is a great joy that I get to hear so many stories of how God is at work in our Synod. Thank you for sharing your stories with me, how you are partnering with others, how are you are being creative and sharing the love of Christ with others. It is so good that we can encourage one another and learn new ways of how to be church in our world. A reading from the second chapter of John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, the creator of life, from Jesus, the savior and lover of life, and from the spirit, the fire of life. Amen. Today's reading from John is probably a familiar one for most of you. We hear it in every single one of the gospels, and often it is a part of Holy Week. This year, though, we're reading the account from the gospel of John. And John's version is a little bit different. John has so much more detail, the, the scene of chaos that erupts as Jesus is in the temple with cattle and sheep and birds going every which way, tables overturned and money dumped out. We can see how distraught Jesus was. And there's also a little bit different timing in the story of John. In the other Gospels, this scene of chaos in the temple happens during the Holy Week, the final time that Jesus will be entering Jerusalem. In the Gospel of John, this is the first time that Jesus goes to Jerusalem, the first of three times. And in his going, he begins his public ministry. There has been one other event so far, and that was at a wedding a place of family and friends, and a show of God's abundance as water is turned into wine. And now he comes to this place, and that he questions what is going on. Why has this become a marketplace? And when he is asked about his intent, about what he is up to, he comes back with a strange reply that this very place will be destroyed and in three days risen again. Now the author 
tells us that indeed Jesus is referring to the temple as his own body. He is making re reference that the location of God is no longer in a specific place or in specific rituals. Not that those aren't important, but they need to recognize that Jesus is the Holy One, the one who has come fully human, fully God, to be among God's people, God's creation, to restore new life, to remove barriers, to help people to see the grace and mercy of God. And Jesus will continue on his journey. He will move around the region. He goes up to Samaria and he meets a woman at a well. And she wonders, where is the proper place to worship? On our mountain or in Jerusalem? And Jesus lets her know, neither. There will be a new way. Again, pointing to his presence. He is the Son of God. It will continue on as he meets other people, as he frees other people from the chains that they are bound in. And in the story of the man born blind, we get to see that worship in reality. At the end of that story, the man drops to Jesus' feet and worships him. And Jesus doesn't stop him. Jesus acknowledges that he is God with us, Emmanuel, Messiah. Now the book of John was written at a time when people would know that yes, indeed, this massive, unimaginably strong built building would come to ruin. They would also know about Jesus' death and resurrection, his coming to disciples who were locked up in a room for fear of the Jews and bringing them a word of peace so that they could recognize Jesus among them again and sending them out into the world. And these people who are hearing this story can take solace in knowing that with the temple gone, we can still worship Jesus. They know that even though they are locked up and afraid for persecution, for naming Jesus as Lord, that God has a plan for them too, and that God will be sending them out. The author of John says, I have written all these things that you might know the Messiah, that you might know Jesus is the Messiah through the signs that he has done, and that you might find life in him. It's a curious time. It feels as though we too might be able to understand in a way that we haven't before in our lives what it might have been like for those early believers who are locked up, who are fearful, who can't gather together as a community, who can't have a place that they can call their place of worship. We've been locked out of our buildings. Most congregations will be reaching the one-year mark, perhaps this weekend, perhaps in another weekend, and most of us are still not gathering together in our space. How we long to be together, how we long to enter that space to worship God. And as we begin to make those plans, I wonder how much of our longing is to actually be in that building and how much of it is a, for us to be gathered together again? To be with those who help us remember that God is faithful, who help us to remember God's call in our life, who pray for us as we pray for them. And yet we also know that we have found ways throughout this year to still do that. If you had told me a year ago that most congregations in our Synod would find a way to have worship online every week, I would never have believed it. But we find ways to go forward. We have a God that isn't bound to buildings, that isn't bound to traditions as we have known them. A God who is living and active and among us. 
And I think about as we plan to move forward, how will we do that? I'm hoping that we aren't just going to think that we will go back to the way we were before in 2019. And the reason I say that is that I think that there are, are many things that have changed. We have changed, our communities have changed, the way we worship now has changed. And as we changed how we worship, I think there are others among us that have joined us. People we have not met face to face in person yet. People that may not even turn the video on while they listen to our services. What will we do when we go forward? What will we do when we gather again in our building and in our space? We also are mindful that even before the pandemic, there were people who couldn't attend our services, members of our community who might have been too ill to come. Maybe they didn't have transportation to be able to come. Maybe they had work that required them to be there on Sunday mornings. Will we remember them as we go forward? Will we find space and new ways to engage with them and to allow them to still worship with the community? Jesus says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. How will we continue to reach those who are out there? As a part of my work as the director for Evangelical Mission, I have an opportunity to visit many congregations and new worship sites. And one thing is that I've heard stories that are very similar all across our synod from a variety of people but have the same theme. Now we may have been meeting in a pub or outdoors or in a restaurant or around a dinner table. But the story goes something like this. I thought I would never, never, never return to a church. And yet here I am. And I am so glad that I have found a community of faith in a way that I felt free to engage. You see, besides having reasons that keep people from worship, such as transportation or work or illness, there are also those who have been hurt by the church over the years many different ways and they might not ever share that with you but it may be something that keeps somebody from walking through our doors from knowing that they would be safe for being who they are as they join a new community so it is important for us to also consider how can we be a welcome place for those people how is it that God is preparing us at this time with his word of peace to us and his sending us out just as he did with the disciples in that upper room after the, um, his death and after his resurrection and sent them out? How will God be sending us out? Who will God be sending us to? Where will we find people to partner with to share the love of Christ to our whole community. If you are wondering at this time how in the world you might be able to do such things, I invite you to go to our Synod webpage and find the list of New Start Ministries. Perhaps you can go on and visit them as they also are often worshiping online. When we can gather again, you can go in person Find the creative ways that they are finding safe space for people, whether it's outdoors, whether it's in a restaurant setting, whether it's a ministry called Love Me for families who have children with special need and they offer a day where the children have one-to-one -one volunteers and do activities in either arts or sports while the parents get to gather for support for one another, to look at the scriptures together, and to have time to pray together. They may not feel comfortable coming into our space for worship because they might be concerned that their child would be, be disruptive. How can we be creative 
not to copy what has happened, but to listen and to be aware of what God is calling us to in our community, in new ways and in maybe ways we never even imagined yet. This is an opportunity to take a difficult year and find a new way forward. I look forward to hearing from you as you begin to work through these ideas, as you begin to wonder what God is calling you, as you begin to recognize that Jesus is present wherever we are, and not just in one location, and not in just one way. And then our ability to be creative and to listen to people and to offer safe space will allow others to find the love and life in Christ. I send you with a blessing from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. May the peace of Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again in our doors. In the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathering our many prayers into one, let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside, alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially Elia and Shirley. Hear us, O oh God. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us, nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O oh God. For what else shall the people of God pray today? In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. God of all compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant to us what you know we need, that we may walk in the life and peace of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with the people around us. In these anxious stay-at-home times, it is important to continue our faithful practices, remembering how we as individuals are connected as a community with one another and with the whole world God loves. 
Bethel continues to support vital services for our less fortunate neighbors to address hunger and homelessness and empower global siblings around the world all through our tithes and offerings. Please continue to make your offering checks to Bethel and mail or deliver them to the office. Our ministry with our partners through the ELCA together is more important than ever in these days of the pandemic. Thank you. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us in any language or any version. Our Father in heaven, Ikhuskanlah namamu, datanglah kerajaanmu, jadilah kedamba di bumi seperti di surga. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials, and of us from the evil one, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory is ours, now and forever. Amen. Christ Jesus dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love, strengthened by the Spirit and filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. 